Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Microprojects with Michelle. So I am so excited because we're going to be doing a new visualization called Chloropleth Maps. Um, I'm gonna switch over to my computer and let's start coding. Okay guys, let's get started on creating Chloropleth Maps from data frames with Folium. So today we're going to be doing a new type of visualization which is called Chloropleth Maps. So the first thing that we're gonna do is explore the Folium Python library. So this is a basically a, um, a library that allows us to create Chloropleth Maps. And so let's look at the code real quick. So what they do here is we first start by doing a couple of imports, right? So we import Folium, import requests, import pandas. And then after that, we basically get the data. So we do that by doing request.get, and then we use these links to get the data. And then we also get a CSV file. The next thing that we're gonna do is create a map. So we use m equals folium.map. And then we have the location as the initial latitude and longitude, and then we have a zoom level to begin with. After that, we actually do the data visualization. So we do folium.chloropath to create the map, and then we have a bunch of different parameters right here. And so it looks like we're doing something with employment rate for this chloropath, and then we basically um, render the map at the end. So let's give this a run and see what it looks like. So use Python. And by the way, if you do not have this um, already installed, there are a couple of commands to do in your terminal um, that's on the website. So make sure you do that. But here you can see we have our chloropleth map, which basically splits up the map into the 50 states. And we have a scale bar of employment rate from 3 to 10%. So the darkest um, states, so like I guess California um, and North Carolina <laughs> are um, have like pretty high um, unemployment rates and then whereas these states right here have lower ones um, and yeah so like the color the darkest of a color corresponds to a higher employment rate so that's a pretty good set of code and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change our data set and we're gonna start by looking at the University of Illinois demographics by state and so we have this data set from the Division of Management Information that basically gives us a lot of information about our students. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a sub table titled by permanent home address. And so um, we're going to look at like the University of Illinois students and um, data about their home address. And so let's go down here. The first thing that we're going to do is create a data frame of Illinois students by state. And so we're going to load this CSV file. So we already have pandas imported, or let's do it again. Import pandas as pd. We say pd.read csv, and then we're gonna copy paste this string in so we can read the data in. As you can see, we have all 50 states right here, and then we have the number of undergrads, um, professors, grads, and total individuals that um, who resides from um, a specific state. So let's run these tests to make sure we did it correctly. Looks good. Okay, so now we're on to part three, which is making our own chloropath map. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the code that we have from before, and then we're gonna do a couple of modifications. So the first modification we're gonna do is instead of loading the data set that we, they've provided us, we're gonna change state data to be equal to our data frame. So instead of like loading in the CSV, since we already did p.readcsv, we're just going to say that is equal to our previously loaded in data frame, like so. So now let's give this code a run. And um, they give us a warning, actually, that we should get an error statement, which um, if you look right here, it's called a key error. And so the key error is unemployment. And so um, basically, a key error indicates that we've tried to look for a column that does not exist. And that makes sense because um, we before we were working with an unemployment data so it makes sense that we had a row called unemployment but now that we're working with um like residential locations for illinois students like it doesn't make sense for us to have an unemployment and so what we're going to do is we're going to fix this so let's go back to our data frame in part two what column contains the total number of students from illinois in each state well if we look right here the column total with the capital t is going to be that column name so we're going to go ahead and switch um state with total so that's going to hopefully fix our um, error, which is good. So now we actually have a compiling code. And so um, if we look at now, the entire map is gray. And so gray means that there's no data available for our, um, for that location, but our data from desert data. So let's see how to fix this. Um, 
So we have something called the key on field. And so the key on field specifically tells us how to map the visualization, right? And so let's do state geo features to get that. So as you can see, um, we have like the feature, we have the ID, which is Alabama, but it's like AL and we have properties. And so the state column in our data set contains the full state name, right? Instead of the two letter abbreviation. So if you look right here, like here is the, um, it's like the state name. However, in this part, what they do is um, they have the ID being AL. And so we kind of have like this, this discrepancy where we can't really fully pair up the um, state IDs with like the state names because they're not the same. So we can't just do that. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to um, replace the key on attribute to be equal to feature.properties.name. And so if we go up here and we do, so instead of feature ID, we're gonna do feature.properties.name. That'll get us actually the state. And so now that we've loaded that, our map now looks like this. So, you know, not, doesn't give us a bunch of information, but um, it's at least colorful now, which means that we've successfully loaded in our data. So let's see the next step. I think this is one of the last steps. Um, we can see that a majority of the students are um, at the University of Illinois come from Illinois. So um, that makes sense because, you know, we're, it's an in-state. But let's look at the other states um, because they all are the same. And so the first thing we're going to do, though, is fix the legend. So they want our legend to be a descriptive title of the data that we're visualizing. And so um, if we do legend... Um, so legend, we can change it to, um, let's do a descriptive name, like University of Illinois Student Hometowns. I feel like that's pretty good. So let's give this a run. I can see now instead of um, an employment rate, we have hometowns right here, which looks good. So now let's move on. Let's run a couple test cases to make sure we did this correctly before we move on to the next part. Okay, so now we're going to move on to part four, and so what we're going to do is first start by sorting the database on the total number of students in each state. And so we're going to do that by basically just um, using sort values. So we're going to do df.sort underscore values, and then that passes in a column. Um, and so the column name we're going to use is total, because that's going to give us our total students. We're going to sort it by total. So we give this a red, we can see, so Virgin Islands, Guam, Alaska, all those is going to be the least, and then the most is um, Illinois, and then... California. And so now that what they want us to do is find the state that has the second largest representation of students. And so what we're going to do is that one is California. So we can do df. So we're going to df um, state equal to California. So if we give this a run, we'll be able to see that one singular row, California, which is the, uh, if we look here, it's the second state with the second um, large representation. We didn't do other countries because they wanted a U.S. state. All right, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to do scale the data. And so um, if we look at our data, like we have states where there's like thousands of students and we have states where there's literally like two, right? And so a common way that people scale things is by using a log scale. So this is like a logarithm scale and you can read up on this a little bit, but basically it allows us to scale based on um, by the number of possible zeros in a number right so one has no zeros ten has two digits one zero one hundred three so etc etc two zeros three zeros four and so log is going to be able to give us basically a way of scaling things um so like 33 is going to be like 1.52 72 so 1.56 and etc etc and so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the log function and so um, we're going to create a new column, total log 10, that uses the mp.log10 function with the total column. So we're going to do df total log 10 is equal to mp.log10, and then we're going to put total as our column. Let's give this a run. Oh, that did not work. I think it's df total, actually. Let me give this a try. I haven't actually used this before. It's this. There we go. Okay, it was df. So make sure that we pass in the data frame, not the um, not just this. Okay, looks good. And so this is it. Like our new column right here has been scaled to um, to have these values here. 
And so now let's run a test case real quick. And then our last, I think it's our last step here is to actually create our log scaled map. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy paste from all the way up here our old code like this. And then we're going to change the scaled part. So for where we did the scaling, which is, where did we scale it? Instead of using total, we're going to use total log 10. That's how we're going to do it. So we're going to change the column. So we use the column that's already been scaled. So if you give this a run and we do a big reveal, boom. Look at that. This is our new Clarketh map. It's going to have um, a bunch of different data points. And yeah, it looks pretty solid. So that looks really good. So you can see, you know, Illinois is the darkest, but at least not all the colors are the same. Alaska is one of the lightest ones. That's what I remember. And so, yeah, um, that concludes our micro project. I hope you guys had fun learning out with me. Um, I'm going to submit really quick. Let's run this test to make sure it's right. And then we're going to submit. And yeah, that'll be it. Okay, guys. So now we're going to submit really quickly. So I'm going to start by running the workflow and then hit run workflow. And then it'll take a couple seconds to write. So I'll come back when it's done. All right, guys, so it looks like our grading is done. So let's take a look. OK, perfect. We got 100 percent. That's awesome. As always, if any of the sections don't pass, make sure you go back to that specific part and see if there's anything you missed. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. I hope you guys had a great time coding. See you in the next one. Bye.